Hey folks, welcome to the video. It's Johnny Keeley here and Instagram have just launched a new product called Instagram Guides. This is a feature I've been waiting for for a while and I'm really excited that it is finally here. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to create Instagram Guides and how they work. And we're gonna talk about what I'm gonna use them for and why maybe you should be as excited as I am about Instagram Guides. So I'm Johnny Keeley, and this channel is all about creativity, photography, social media, and how to get the most out of those things. So if that's you, definitely consider hitting subscribe. Now would be a good time as well, because the next video I'm gonna make is all about lots of ideas and tips for Instagram guides. So if you're interested in this video, you're probably gonna be interested in the next video, so hit subscribe. Anyway, let's get on with it. What are Instagram guides? Instagram guides are a way of grouping posts into a kind of scrollable, kind of mini blog where the user can read through your existing posts or products or places and tap on those particular posts to go a little bit deeper into it and see those original posts. Essentially think of it like a little mini blog. I like this idea mainly because it actually feels like an original idea. We've kind of got used to Instagram reusing and recycling other people's ideas or flat out just stealing them, um, Instagram Reels for example. But this really feels like a new idea from Instagram. I may be wrong, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments what other platform did they steal this idea from. But the point is that it feels like a new way to use our existing posts and our existing content. And on the face of it, it might not feel too exciting, but I promise you, when you really dive into the ways that we can use Instagram guides, it actually gets pretty exciting. And one of the things that frustrates me about Instagram is actually that your old posts are dead. No one really sees them. Instagram guides is a way of using all of that old content, that hard work that you put into those posts and bringing them back to all your new followers. And that's just one of the reasons that I think that Instagram guides is gonna be a really fun thing to use. Anyway, to post a guide, at least for the time being, you need to be on your profile, and then there's a little plus in the top, you hit that, and it will give you three options of Instagram guide that you want to post. Firstly, the mode is places in your city or locations. So in this mode, you seem to be able to search for geotag locations, and then you can take other users' posts to make a kind of, let's call it a travel guide or a guide about a particular place. Maybe this new feature means that I will change the way I geotag. Um, you know, for example, I live in Shropshire, I take photos of Shropshire, so I could geotag with Shropshire and that would make my posts discoverable and mean that other people might want to share them to their guides if they want to make a guide about Shropshire and they are a fan of, you know, photography or particular locations. So with this mode, what you do is you pick a sort of location, a geotag area. I'm gonna pick Shropshire. And then within that, you can see all the different posts that are tagged with Shropshire. So I can pick other people's posts and bring those into my guide. And then you can add a place at the bottom to add another post to your guide. And the idea here is that this is a list of posts and then you can put a little bit of text in between them to explain the post a bit further. I don't know if there's a limit to the amount of posts that you can put into a guide. Uh, I just have to wait and see and do a bit more research. But at the moment, you can definitely do 10, that sort of thing. It's intended to be a lot of posts. And make a note here that you can actually change the title once you've brought it in. Um, it sort of sets it for you and it auto fills it, but you can change that and it's probably a good idea to do so. So if that mode was all about locations and places for creating guides about places, then the next mode is for products. And this is gonna be really, really exciting for any brands that already have a decent relationship with influencers or have a really good Instagram community. Likewise, if you're a content creator who creates content for brands, again, this is gonna be really good for you. I think that this particular part of Instagram guides is gonna be really interesting around Christmas time. For example, I can imagine people putting together lots of guides uh, that support shopping at small businesses or independent businesses around Christmas. In fact, I feel like I could do that. I could pick my favorite products from small businesses, put them together in a guide, share that to my stories. So straight away, I've created some rich content for someone to browse through, but also I've supported each one of those small businesses. It's just an example of a really interesting way of using guides and how it can be a really good thing for the platform. So we recently saw the shopping tab being added and it seems as though when you select these products, you are selecting it from the shop section of Instagram. So you know you see those posts with the little circle tags for products. It seems like we can then grab those particular products or at least posts with those tags in and we can then bring them into our Instagram guide. And in this example, as I've said, we could do a shopping list or a wish list or something like that. Or if you're an influencer, you know you could put together a list of the brands that you represent or the products that you represent 
content. For me as a photographer, I could put together a list of, you know, lenses that I really like. You know, there's a lot of room for creativity in this. Now this works slightly different than the places one. So for example, when you want to select your product, you have to then select the account or the brand that the product belongs to. And then from there, you can look at their posts which have uh, the product tagged in it. So I don't know whether this means that you can't use other people's photos that have that product also in it. There's a little option at the bottom where you can select shop instead, where you can maybe select you know, other creators content that is also tagged with that same product. I don't really know how that works at this point. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But other than that, it works exactly as the places section and you can simply change the text, add more text, change the titles and things like that and really curate it and create it in the way that you want. Now the third mode is posts and this is where you can create it from your own posts and this is the mode that I'm most excited about because you know at the very beginning I was creating content that I was really happy with but I also only had a few hundred followers. Now that I have more followers I would like to bring my old content in front of the new people that have decided to follow my account and if that's any of you guys thank you very much. For example I could do my top 10 posts or, or my five posts that meant a lot to me, you know, these sorts of guides I can put together and recreate content and then explain that content a little bit more by adding that extra text. Now the interesting thing with this mode is that you can either add your own posts or you can add your saved posts. That's how you would add someone else's post. So you have to save it in order to use it in guides. Now what this means is, is that more people will probably end up saving people's posts. And people often consider a save as kind of like a super like. So we all know that likes don't really mean anything at the moment. You know, if you've got thousands of likes on your photo, it doesn't matter, you could have bought those or, you know, it just doesn't really matter for the algorithm. Apparently, I've heard that the algorithm gets way more excited about a saved post. So now maybe people are gonna hit save more because then they can use it in their Instagram guide. Other than those options, it seems like it works as before, where again, you can add your text, change your titles and curate it exactly how you want. Now, as I said, this is gonna be a great way to bring new life to your old posts. Now, where do you find people's guides? They are just above the grid in the little tiny icons, you know, where IGTV is and reels and things like that. So that's where you would go to find someone's guides. And I suppose a way of creating a curated list of uh, just a select few of your guides is you could share those to stories and then you could take those stories and create a stories highlight and then that would show up in the little circle there. That would be a way of saying, you know, my guides, uh, my travel guides or my, I don't know, my product guides. As we've said in some of my other videos, followers are more likely to follow when they can see more personality and they can dive deeper into your content and the stories that you're telling. And guides, honestly, has to be one of the best ways of telling stories on Instagram. And if you're looking for inspiration on what you can create as your first guide or maybe what you're gonna do with Instagram guides, my next video is gonna be full of ideas and inspiration and I'm gonna show off some of the guides that I've seen that I think are really good and could be useful. So if you are a subscriber, then great. If you aren't, definitely hit subscribe button because I'll be putting that out in the next few days. So other than that, I will leave a few of my other Instagram videos on the screen right now. I will leave a link to my Instagram. Feel free to come and say hi. If not, I will see you in the next video.